Hey guys, RC here, coming back with the uh, next video in our Let's Play Out of the Park 18. And this is our historical, fictional, semi-stats only league that we're playing. So we are up to uh, June 8th of 1970, and we are struggling. So it's our first year. Uh, you remember we created the league, we simmed ahead and uh, got to the you know got about 10 years in with history and then uh kind of went through a list of teams uh to to you know take over and Philadelphia was one of uh I think the bottom seven teams that we looked at and the one we decided to go with and we are off to uh a rough start 15 and a half games back and we are in last place so I'm still trying to get the feel of the team, who the players are, and as I mentioned, we are semi-stats only, so we can see some of the actual ratings here, but not the core ratings um, that are typical for, uh, you know, for what you see most people utilizing. And I like that because it kind of gives more guesswork and makes it more like an actual general manager uh, having to kind of evaluate the talent based on what they're actually doing rather than what their ratings stick out and say they are. Um, let's see. I want to get into the standings here. All right. And let's go ahead and play another week. Trade proposal from Houston. All right. They want Mike Brandhorst, our right fielder, and Chris Call, a minor league catcher. And they'll give us a 25-year-old right, right fielder. Well, let's start off. I don't like giving up prospects, so let's evaluate this guy. <clears throat> 253 and 234 last year and this year so he's not hitting well in the minors he did hit 554 in college or the minors wherever that was scouting reports tell me that he should be a top prospect though superior talent good contact hitter um okay so call Oh, the other thing, he's a catcher. All right, so pitchers are throw, have a 4.44 ERA <clears throat> when he's behind the plate this year. All right, call, and I want to look at players. No, front office. There we go, development. <clears throat> Only prospects by potential ratings. So Call is actually listed as my number one catching prospect. All right, so don't like the thought of giving him up even though he's not hitting, but he is only 21. He did hit 554 before. So We'll continue to evaluate that. Not a very good defensive catcher, to be honest, uh, by position. All right. They also want Mike Brandhorst. 18 starts. We picked him up in a trade with the Mets back in 67, so that was while I was getting the history together. 229 last year, 211 this year, first, third, and right field. All right, so he is my backup at two of those positions. All right. 
right, let's see. Brandhorst. Player development. Entire organization. By potential ratings. All right, so he's not in my top three, not in my top three, not in my top three. So let's see now if we do it off of current ratings. Still not in my top threes. Okay, so he's probably available. You know, he's not somebody that I'm set on. 220 overall poor. And they want to give me Ben Kilpatrick. So he's 25, a fourth round pick. 73,000. He's only signed through this year, so it's a contract year. Now he hit 279, 278 last year with 20 homers. 242 with six homers this year. So he's got some hitting potential. 290. Okay. He can play left, center, and right, although right's the only position he can play well. He does have a really good arm, so that's good for right field. And he's a leader, so I could probably use young leadership on my team to develop. 305, 353. Um, now, my right fielder currently is Jesse Johnson. He's 39, right? And he's only hitting 236 this year. Now, I do lose Brandhorst in this deal. But honestly, I think Brandhorst, Johnson's probably going to be a free agent at 39. Brandhorst for this other right fielder would be definitively in my favor. And I've got this 24-year-old catcher that's actually been doing pretty well. Let me look at something on him. This is a new stat that I just had somebody explain to me uh, the other day when you come into a catcher under fielding stats this CERA that's the ERA credited to the catcher the catcher's ERA so this is the ERA of pitchers while he is actually behind the plate so uh, naturally the lower the better and what that means is he's you know he's that determines how well he can call a game, you know, calling pitches at the right time, uh, or are pitchers, you know, with that with a bad catcher, the pitchers start to call, you know, call more pitches. At least that's my understanding. So, but I'm pretty happy with Ramirez at catcher, and I think this gives me an upgrade with a young right fielder. Um. I'm going to I'm going to make that deal. I'm going to make that deal. All right, we'll come back to that. Okay, I do need, however, to designated for assignment. All right, now Kilpatrick is on a major league salary. So we will go ahead and bring him up to the team. And yes, it does put him into the starting role. Johnson now slides into backup at several positions. And my number one bat off the bench. So I think that actually helps us overall. All right, well, let's go ahead and finish out the week. There we are. All right, we've got 22 emails. All right, so we had a uh, career-ending injury for 32-year-old Miguel Torres. 
Minnesota reliever, torn rotator cuff, and he retires. Mm. All right, Houston and Philadelphia with the trade. Another season-ending injury, Steve Williams of the Red Sox. Torn UCL. Leo Corona, his 300th save for the Astros. And that's one reason I wanted to do the 10, at least 10 year history to where you had some numbers that were already in play. Um, maybe I should have done more and been into the second generation of players. I don't know, but that was kind of what I was going for. All right, Kansas City outfielder Rich Yeager. Player of the Week, Josh Altimus, our own Philadelphia Philly right fielder, uh, proved he could compete at the plate. It's 467 average. Now, wow, where? Okay, now where is he playing though? First, left, center, and right. So he's not playing right field. I need to look at that in a second because I don't remember. Altimus is at first base. Okay. So, player of the week, 26 years old. Excellent. Well, 237 for the year, not great, but he had a good week. Uh, let's go in and look at the uh, schedule. We got a 2-1 to one win over Atlanta. Garcia picked up his third win. Very good outing for him. Five hits, one run. Dyke with his seventh save. Seven to three. Chevere picked up his fourth win to even his record at four and four. Home run, two home runs from Altimus, giving him five on the season. In that game, a four to six loss. Tolfson, two runs and got the loss. I'm guessing hat some of Haskell's runs credited towards him well no no because we were behind and never got the lead again yep ah a five to one loss ben como is now three and eight so he's really struggled this year ramirez a no decision Schwab out of the bullpen to get the save. Dyke, his ninth save. Altimus with his third homer of the week. Excellent. And then a 4-2 loss. Garcia, 3-6. and six. And Altimus, his fourth home run of the week, giving him seven on the season. So, very good for him. In fact, let's go take a look at him again. Batting stats, game log. Well, let's look at splits. Major League. So, no, he's been up here all season. So, 197, a homer, 7 RBIs in April. 182. Now, he only started a few games in May. Must have benched him there for a little while. And then he's 8 starts here in June. And he's been really hot. So, yeah, let's see. June 2nd, 5th, 6th, 7th. So he didn't play in every game, but he's he's been playing pretty regularly, I guess. Right-handers. Yeah, he's slated to be the starter both ways. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so Ramirez hitting 303. Altima's now the team leader with seven homers. 
and he's jumped up to 22 RBIs. Ramirez has 30 to lead the way. We picked up a few wins this week, 21 and 39, 17 games back. All right, let's take a look at another week. All right, two and eight in our last 10. Not a good week there. Oh, Brandhorse, the one we just uh, traded away, already suspended. Brandhorse called out on strikes, argued the call, argued for another five minutes. Talked bad about him after the game and got suspended for three games. Wow. <laughs> A season-ending injury for Nate Hodge of the Athletics. A stretched elbow ligament. Brian Hardy, 5 for 5 on the day. National League Player of the Week, Chris Cody of the Cubs. Nick Cochran of the Indians, AL Player of the Week. Justin Mose out for three months, another three months with his dislocated shoulder. Uh, win probability added, WPA. There's our your five leaders for the league. Power rankings, we are still dead last and pretty far behind the Yankees actually. <laughs> and a trade between the Cubs and the Pirates, Jared Collins. 25-year-old first baseman for Kyle Nordland and Jason McCoy, a 28- and a 23-year-old pitcher. And, yeah, the offense just is not doing well. Pitching's actually not horrible. The bullpen's much worse than the starting rotation. Um, let's see, let me thumb through here real quick. Chris Conboy. All right, so he started in double A, went to, or he was in triple A, came down, and now it says he's ready to go back up. Okay, we'll give him a shot there. Angel Sierra, two weeks. Eric Campbell, 709 ERA in the majors. A buck 93 in AAA, so he's actually looking real good at just not translating. Same thing for Faulkner. So those are guys that I've tried elsewhere earlier this year. Linares had a cup of coffee last year. Wow, a hundred point swing. I mean, so he's hitting in triple A, but did not do much of anything in double A. What's his scouting report say? A below, slightly below average hitter. Hamstring strain. Oh, he's on the DL. Okay. All right, let's get another week in. A trade proposal from the Yankees, I think. Yep, Yankees. 37-year-old right-handed pitcher 
for five minor leaguers. Yeah, we're going to reject that trade. I'm rebuilding, man. <laughs> I am rebuilding. I am not... That was nuts. Well, we climbed up a good bit this week. Oh, I forgot to look at the uh, the games last week. Okay. Uh, Zachary Jones of the Angels, AL Player of the Week. Jake Waters of the Mets, NL Player of the Week. Active career pitching leaders in career strikeouts. So Jordan Garcia of Philadelphia sits third on that list. <clears throat> All time. Garcia is our ace, our number one guy. Now, he wasn't with us. That's a guy that I've actually traded for. He was with Cincinnati, our free agent signing. Yep. Free agent. Ugh. All right, we'll delete those. We'll come in and look at the schedule. All right, so we'll come back. We've got two weeks to go through, but I'm only going to look at the wins, I think. That's demoralizing to look at all the losses. <laughs> so Tolufson got his first win to even his record at 1-1 one and one at that time. Four hits, two runs, six innings. Dropped two out of three to the Astros. We got swept by the Mets. Some close games, but, you know, if you can't win them. 6-5 to five win as we take two out of four with the Expos. Ben Como and no decision. Dyke blows the save and then picks up the win. Ruth and Cross home runs. Cross's first home run of the season. 11 hits, 11 runs, so a big offensive day. Chapman with the win. I have two Chapmans. B. Chapman with the win. Nick Chapman with an inning of relief. Haskell with the save. Ramirez, Ruth, Bell, and Rosales with home runs. Bell's first homer of the season. Second for Rosales. Third for Ruth. And seventh for Ramirez. And then we lose three out of four to the Cardinals. We win the last game, the second game of a doubleheader. Ramirez gets his first win of the season. Dykes his tenth save. And what's really upsetting about that for me, they're the team that was right in front of us, or well, closest to us. So if they're one of the worst teams in the East and then they took three out of four, that certainly means we are really bad. So, uh, you know, this is going to be an ongoing process. It's not going to be solved overnight. I wonder if there is a way... Team focus. Owner. Accounting. Strategy, overall strategy. Player strategy, no, that's not what I want. To switch over to the the uh, moderate saber metrics, um, not quite what I normally go with, but that's interesting. I just want to play with that and see what it does. And real quick, 
I forgot my phone a minute ago and we're right at 25 minutes so let's go ahead and put a cut right here and we will come back uh, in the next episode and pick up right here at the end of June thanks for checking out the video talk to you later bye